the biotech trade is starting to lose some of its momentum. And Jim, you're starting to get more cautious on these names as well. Have to. I mean, we have really big gains. Big gains have to be preserved. It doesn't mean I don't love the four horsemen. I talk about and get rich carefully. I say, Regeneron, sort of Biogen, Celgen, kill it. But, but there are times when you just have to say don't buy. And I think that there are times when you need to hedge. And I like your hedging strategy for people who have very big gains. Right. And what's interesting is this sector has really done well this year, just like consumer staples right. because of the M&A. Mm -hmm. These companies are growing via acquisition right. organically. Right. The cyclic steel was an explosive deal for people. Right. So it, you don't necessarily have to go short these stocks or take money off the table, but you can hedge yourself. Wait, give me a strategy because I don't want people to necessarily have to go right. take big capital gains. But what you can look at is the inverse ETF. It's two times short the NASDAQ biotech okay. uh, does index. It, does it uh, calculate every day or can you just own it and still make money? You have to do the trade. Is it one of those that... Right. Well, it, it's a trade that you have to actively manage okay, because it, it, does, you know, it does move tick to tick with right. what's happening with the sector. It's essentially the inverse of IBB, which has been a wild popular ETF. Okay. So for customers who have made money in the individual names or in the IBB, this would be a nice hedge okay. to protect against your positions or even if you're cautious on the sector overall and don't necessarily want to go short because these stocks are so volatile to put a position on with BIS, which is something that we've been looking at in options profits. Even if you take a look at the five-day chart, mm -hmm. it hit its 52-week low on March 20th. But if you look at it the couple days trading after, it has moved higher and on some really nice volume. So that's your confirmation. Okay. There. Options are a bit tricky to trade on this because the spreads are incredibly oh, wide. But, geez. but that's How about kind buying of puts on the BT? Can you can buy puts on the actual? You, you, you can buy puts on the IBB. You can buy right. calls on the BIS. But what's great about this is since it's such a volatile sector, at least there's a way where you can proactively hedge it. Right. Now, last year at this time, we had the rollover. A lot of that was precipitated by a lot of IPOs. We don't have that this time. This time it was just blow off and blow off because pharmaceuticals had more than one buyer. There were two buyers. Uh, blow off because there were a series of approvals that were very exciting and some very good regulatory news, say on Regeneron and on Amgen. But what I want to caution people is, is that this is one of those groups that when they have the sell-off, which just began Monday, and we talked about very cautiously on May of Money last week, it doesn't end instantly. It, it, it ends with people recognizing, holy cow, I'm going to lose my gains. But that's already after a lot of gains right. have been lost, yeah, which is why I like your strategy. But you know what's great, too? You don't have to pick the top or the bottom. So let's say no, the low was in BIS on March 20th, which was that Monday. Mm -hmm. It all coincides. But if you get on the momentum trade, that's what it makes well, that's sense. that's what you do best. That's what we did with Urban. That was terrific. We did MasterCard. So I would say for me, remember, I'm saying don't buy. This is a great hedge strategy. Maybe for someone who's very uh, uh, actively managed, they want to uh, buy some puts on a, an index that does look like it's rolling over. All right, it, it's this one. Okay, thanks very much, Jim. For The Street in New York, I'm Jill Malandrino.